Hi, welcome back to the Chamber of Spoilers. I recently saw the thumbnail for a Frenemies video and cringe. <laughs> so I figured why not react to it? At this point, the pain is just kind of a dull ache, like a year long stress migraine that sort of fades into a background headache. And if parody is the strongest form of flattery, then I guess reaction content is the lowest form of YouTube. So I guess we're just gonna descend into this trench. <laughs> Firstly, the thumbnail. Oh God, I feel like I shouldn't have to say this is offensive, but I say that every time I talk about Trisha. Like, I'm kind of impressed, but in a negative way. Like they have exceeded the disappointment that I thought was possible. I would totally expect this of Trisha, but I feel like Ethan should know better. This is offensive to Hasidic people, like really offensive. Wearing their traditional garments as a costume to mock them is horrible. <laughs> now Trisha appears to be wearing a talit on her head. A talit or talis for the uninitiated is a holy garment that some Jews wear in synagogue when they pray. Trisha's just kind of wearing it loosely on her head. And I think later in the video, we see that she's wearing a leotard with it, like that's it. I think she was going for style over substance since she's more interested in getting attention than anything else. But this is not what I'd call good or correct. Like people, we don't just go around wearing tully in our day-to-day -day lives. Like it's not a fashion statement. My tully, I haven't been to synagogue in like a long time now. And mine stays folded carefully in lift bag because I want it to be safe. Tully are very sacred, very hard to clean and very expensive. And you don't just like wear it over your hair, which probably has products in it, so you're gonna damage it. Anyway, uh, let's get started because I'm already in pain. Shalom, everybody. Shalom, shalom. Uh, welcome to Frenemies. Today we are doing Jewish trivia because Trisha stepping to me, of all people, <laughs> the king of the Jews, aka, and um, you really think you can beat me at Jewish trivia? Uh, yes. Baruch Ata Adonai. Baruch. Baruch Ata. You, hit, you gotta hit that. I don't know if Baruch has the ch in yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think it does either. It does not have the Baruch. Ch no. Baruch, Baruch Ata Adonai. Oh, you know it. Melechain. Melechain. I'm dressed today, of course, as a Hasid. Remember when I called you a Hasidic up? Jew before I met you on the on your podcast? Yeah, I said you they're Hasidic. Ethan likes to say insulting things and say and with peace and love after it, like. Okay, that's like saying no offense after calling somebody a slur. Like, that doesn't make it better, bud. I don't know how to explain to you. I feel like I want to assign a lot of the blame on this to him because, like, he's not in charge of Trisha's behavior, but he's gone far past enabling at this point. He's facilitating her insults to all Jews. I am, I am livid. <laughs> Yeah, when I put this outfit on, you said to me, that's how I imagined you before I met you. And I was like, what? The first video you did about me where you, like, were hateful on my appearance or that I was photoshopping was my initial re reaction was like, oh, this is a Hasidic Jew, like pissed at me. But I was dressed normally. But your internal was Hasidic. You think I was I was conveying a conservative view on the world or something? Yeah. Well, mm. just in my experience, Hasidic Jews like actually do like spit on you in Fairfax. Oh, for real? For real. That's all I know of Hasidic mm. Jews. Yeah, they're the worst. I mean, with peace and love, of course. Did it again? He did it again. He said, they're the worst with peace and love. Oh my God, man. I find it very telling that they want to um, summarize all Hasidic Jews with this one. Like, it kind of gives me the vibe of Ethan's being like, no, we're the good Jews. As a Jewish person, you can never make yourself look better by shitting on other Jews. It's the same way as like when people are like, oh, I'm not like other girls. Oh, I'm not like other Jews. I'm not conservative like other Jews. I'm not, I'm not observant like other Jews. I'm not crazy. They're crazy. I'm not crazy. Even if I don't agree with a lot of the way Orthodox people live their lives, if they're not harming anyone, it's their business. <laughs> they're the worst. Well, and <laughs> women are not allowed to like pray, but non-Orthodox Jewish women can pray and they can wear the tally. tally. Yeah, so... This is also wrong. I have been to Orthodox bat mitzvahs. Women can wear tallit when they pray together. Women can pray by themselves in a separate women's minyan. Minyan is a prayer group. And also women can pray by themselves on the other side of the mechitza. There's a separation in Orthodox synagogues and some slightly more religious conservative synagogues where the women sit on one side and the men sit on the other, the children can move around. This is obviously really gender binary, so excuse me, like a lot of more, what some might consider traditional religious stuff is very gender binary. So you'll have to kind of stick with the jargon with me on this. But 
basically there's a real separation in those communities of women and men. And it's not anyone else's business to judge that unless people are being actively harmed. There are a lot of experiences of abuse in those communities, but they're not referring to that. The women in those communities choose to stay there. If they want to be a part of that, it is none of your business. If they want to leave, that is their business. And if you'd like to help them, that is also your business. Patricia's not doing anything to help anybody. She's not even bringing an accurate awareness of orthodoxy. The New Orthodox women who I know, they find a lot of empowerment in whatever role they choose to take in those communities. And they find a lot of empowerment in modesty. And that's their fucking business. Right. Because you, know you did a DNA test, right? You're like yeah, 100% I'm like a Jew. Jew. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> I'm so excited. I hope I win so I can say I beat a Jew. Like one against a Can 100%. you beat a Jew? <laughs> well, my genetic makeup doesn't necessarily indicate how well I'm going to do a trivia. You, know you should, I mean? though, if you like grew up that way and you went to Hebrew school. I, I agree. You would think that I would perform better than you. But I'll say just based on what I know about you and our time together is that you I've, I expect you to win for some reason. Here's the thing. I don't like how Trish is assuming that all Jews have like a similar level of knowledge. I've been very fortunate. Unlike a lot of people, I've had the really wonderful experience of going to multiple Jewish schools and having lots of friends at different observance levels. I have had a pretty rounded Jewish education, and yet by a lot of standards, I don't know anything. I did not have a Jewish high school experience. Um, I, I am not fluent in Hebrew. I'm not even passable in Hebrew. I can't even ask for a cab. Like, but the Jewish diaspora is really far spread. And so in where I went to school, it was really rural and there were not a lot of people who were as educated as me. And I was qualified to teach Hebrew school because there weren't a lot of people who could do it. Basically what I'm trying to say is that like, people really don't have a lot of control, especially when they're young, when that kind of stuff gets imparted in how Jewish they're raised in how much they're aware of. And it doesn't make you any less Jewish or less valuable as a Jew if you don't have a really robust Jewish education. I find it really troubling that she seems to think that there's like degrees of Jew. Everyone is exactly as Jewish as everybody else. I eat shrimp, I'm just as Jewish as anybody else. Like. People seem to believe that like, because you're different levels of observant, it validates your Jewish identity more or less. That is not true. Just because you're a convert, you're not more or less Jewish than anybody else. And it's stupid that I get more credit saying this because I look and sound like what people imagine a Jewish person to look and sound like. And it's stupid that because I have white skin, I am more valid as a Jewish person. It's stupid that because I have curly hair, I'm more valid as a Jewish person. And it's stupid that because both of my parents are Jewish, I'm more valuable as a Jewish person. Oh my God, we're still only four minutes in. God help me. I mean, I hope so. I've been but like- But there again, you literally didn't even know about the Holocaust existed uh, uh, like a month ago. So. Holocaust aside, I do know Jewish history very well. Cause I was like a poser most not, of my life. How can you not know about the Holocaust, know about Jewish trivia? Because every Jewish guy I've dated never brought that up. They brought up Rosh Hashanah. So I had to like learn what that is, you know, mm -hmm. like all these things. And now- I will say that like cultural osmosis is a thing. Like you can know a lot about different cultures by being around people of those cultures, but- it doesn't mean that you're an expert. I find it really troubling that Trish is like, oh, because of my associations with those other people, I'm an expert on this subject. I never claim to be an expert on the subject of racism against black people or people of color because I know a lot about it from school and because I know a lot about it from friends and from growing up in a really racially diverse area. I have more awareness, I think, than the average person who was raised white in this country. But I don't present myself as an expert to other people of those races. I don't tell black people, oh, I'm an expert on your trauma. I don't tell Asian people, oh, I understand. I am also part of this. Inserting yourself into somebody else's culture with an air of expertise is offensive. Unless you have like a fucking doctorate. With my Israeli fiance, I have to learn about Purim. Okay, well, we'll put you to the test today. <laughs> that's for sure. So I hope we I hope we have a lot of like Israeli, like Jewish, Hebrew, maybe not so much Holocaust. Although, shout out. Of course, out. Holocaust. There better be a question about the Holocaust. That's a very important if you want to be, come here and act like you're a Jew <laughs> of my pedigree. Anne Frank is on the cover of Time Magazine this month. So really? shout out to Delayed. her. Delayed. Why is she on the time? Why? Is I that? don't know. She didn't even die in the Holocaust. I looked that up. Did you know that? She like kind of survived. What do you mean she didn't? What? She died in a concentration camp. No, no, You're that's wrong. false. Lo, I think that's false. Oh Look that up. God, I'm pretty stop. sure her younger siblings died in the concentration camp and she went on to like work and stuff like that. Girl, like you after. are so wrong. I don't think so. Because I looked it up and I was like, what's her tragedy? You Go know? ahead, Dan. Anne Frank died in 1945 in Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in Germany. Yeah. Oh, I already lost. Yeah, you lost. <laughs> but I do love... What are you coming out here with this bullshit Anne Frank <laughs> trivia? Like, what are you even talking about? I swear I looked that up. I said 
<laughs> you didn't look shit up. I said it yesterday to Moses, and he didn't disagree with me. He's like, oh, that makes sense. So. Well, I don't think Moses necessarily knows much either, to be frank, to be honest. Oh, to my him. God. He <laughs> is an Oju. Also... Do I, I kind of like the Virgin Mary in this. I kind of like it. I feel like a cosplay. By the like, way, according to conservatives, you sh The fact that she calls it cosplay is very telling. Like, it's not. You realize that, right? Like, if she wanted to get just a scarf, <laughs> a scarf to wear over your hair, that's totally fine. I mean, as long as you're not, like, trying to wear, like, a hijab or anything, because that's not you either. She goes over this. But, like, she's totally in it for the aesthetic, and it's so fucking offensive. I'm a Jew for Jesus, just FYI. Like, I, I do believe in Jewish culture and Judaism, but I'm also a Jew for Jesus. So, so Jews do not, just for the record, Jew for Jesus is like a, real a huge sacrilege. It's in People Israel. Not, There's Jews for Jesus. Yeah they're, yeah, they're considered freaks. Are they getting stoned? No. So I think it's okay. In Israel? No. Because in exactly. Israel, we don't stone people for their religious beliefs. Let me get something um, real straight here. She thinks that as long as you're not being actively stoned, like having stones thrown at you by members of the faith that you're offending, whatever you're doing is fine. <laughs> I'm gonna have an aneurysm. Oh, the vein in my forehead is coming out. That's that's fun. Thank you for joining us. Well, I have a star of David on today too. Shout out to David. Is she gonna keep saying that? Shout out to this person. Why? <laughs> you know the Cohen brothers are Jewish? Yeah, Cohen, duh. Trisha loves to just say, you know, this person is Jewish. It kind of makes me feel like she's making a list. Traditionally, when you put us on lists, it doesn't go well. Wait, are you Jewish, Dan? I'm half Jewish. Wait, which half? Your mom or dad? My dad. Which fake. Right. The right. mom's got to be Girl, you Jewish. don't even have shit in you. You're, you're way more fake Jew than me. I'm yeah, <laughs> stop. Who are you? This, we've got like a Jewish supremacist my over old, here. My old dad's side of the family is Jewish. So, yes, I'm mm, not Jewish. The mom's got to be Jewish, too. He said he's not Jewish. You're, you, you're screaming. Fa well, you're, you're like one day of, of two <laughs> Hebrews training away from spitting at girls on the street on Fairfax. So here's a problem I have with this. Um, I hate it when anyone ever tries to gatekeep like parentage um it doesn't matter how you're jewish if you're jewish trisha is telling this man who is a jewish person that uh he's not jewish enough or jewish in the way that she'd prefer um because the conservative jewish community and the orthodox community don't see judaism as flowing through the father's line only the mother because you can tell who the mother is it's an old ass way of thinking about things and anyone from any degree of like progressive judaism will tell you that if you have a jewish parent you're jewish and you're not half Jewish, you're Jewish. If you don't want to identify as a Jew, that's your fucking business. But I I can't believe that like this is an appropriate work environment that she's just shouting fake Jew, fake Jew at this person. Like, how dare you? So we're finally arriving at the Jewish trivia, which I have been dreading. Like, it's already hard enough when Trisha makes remarks about stuff that's like, oh, uh, you're just saying these things that come to your mind naturally. Interesting for me. Um, but then they're going to like designated time to ask questions. I, I don't know how I feel about all this. So I'm very concerned. <sighs> Basic knowledge here. Uh, who is said to be the first Jew? <laughs> the, the first Jew? Yes, the first Jewish person. Oh my God, easy. Trisha's blind confidence is worrying to me. I think she's going to say a bunch of offensive stuff. I'm all about the biblical. But I think I know it. I don't know. Okay. Ready? All right. Let's see what you got. Moses. That's incorrect. That's not true. And Abraham. Abraham is correct. Abraham? Moses! He freed the Jews. They were all Egyptians you just, before. You, you just, just said the they answer in your own statement. He freed the Jews. They were already Jews. <laughs> How could you? Yeah. I thought they gave him the name Jews after. So if she's ever read like, even the tiniest amount of the Torah, she would know that, like, Judaism didn't start with Moses. The covenant was made with Abraham, like, a lot of generations before that. <laughs> Eek! He freed them. Weren't they Egyptians and they became no, Jews? No, the, the Jews Jew were land? slaved in Egypt. It's I'm all part not. of the whole, it's the whole story. Uh, Abraham had the Technicolor dream coat. The loser has to no, do something. I would say, Joseph. don't make it up now. Now you're like, oh, she's going to lose. I something about Mel Gibson because he's such an anti semite. Like I know Mel Gibson. I used to go to his church in Malibu. Yeah, he's an anti semite. You have his number? I used to. What? Yeah. Let's give him a ring right now. We have to. The loser has to prank call him and say, "Hey, anti semite." 
Bye. Hey, anti semite. Bye. Okay, whatever. Next, Ethan's winning. Did you love this game? Okay. All right. Second question. Well, I guess fun. this one. <laughs> this one, you guys are gonna know because we just talked about Who's it. Was Abraham? Oh my God. Oh my God. What did he do? He's, He's got the first Jew. Didn't he like kill his son or some shit? Or was well, that he was willing to kill his son and then. Yeah. So they both clearly know nothing. <laughs> but um, it's a lot to me that they like don't know anything and also have such confidence and want to speculate. Like I just I can't. Also, Christianity is part of the Abrahamic religions. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are all Abrahamic religions. You should know who Abraham is. You're supposed to be this, like, Christian person. Where is this, like... God stayed his hand. Yeah, the and... Bible is such a uh, uplifting, heartwarming story. God goes, I, you have to sacrifice your firstborn son to me and kill him viciously. And he's like, all right, God, whatever I got to do. And God's like, boom, test you, bitch. That's only Old Testament. No. Old Testament yeah, God was exactly. mean. New Testament God is where it's at. So really, that's why you should be Jews for Jesus, because the New Testament God's really nice. Well, Old Testament God is harsh as fuck. Yeah. God, well, God don't play. God don't fucking play again. So Abraham is God. Bruh. No. <laughs> All right. This one's you're not a supposed little... to say God if you're a Jew. You you're can... supposed to be G dash D. No, no, no. God. You could say God. His real name is Yahweh, which you're not supposed to say. Oh, my God. Don't say it. Yeah, well, guess what? I don't give a fuck. Stop. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, man, I'm already losing. Yeah, who who yeah. led the, who led the Jews out of Egypt? Oh. Trisha, once again, trying to tell people stuff when she's not, like... Okay, so the whole G-D thing, a lot of people will not write in the name of God on stuff. Um, that's their business, but, like, I... It's not, like, a thing where, like, Jews don't say God. Like, oh my god. Like, that's just, that's fine. Like, it's not like I'm gonna get struck by lightning. <laughs> a lot of people write G dash D or like a single character like Hey or Yud, which are Hebrew characters, to represent God. Um, because writing the name of God and anything means that that paper can't be destroyed. And so there's like a bunch of different like schools of thought on that. Just keep saying the same answer for everything. Right. <laughs> the only Jew I know. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> The king, well, he wasn't the king, but he was the greatest prophet who never made it to the promised land because God scorned him after everything he did for him. Moses. You know, my Moses sometimes referred to himself. He's like, I was a pharaoh. I was like, no, you're not the Moses. He sometimes thinks he's the Moses. Well, oh, Moses was a pharaoh. Yeah. But he thinks he's actually that Moses. Are you? Do you think you're Moses, Moses? He thinks he's the OG Moses. You're not Moses. You're a Moses, well, not the Moses. He thinks he's yeah. the Moses sometimes. Sometimes he does think that. I'm like, are you trolling me? Okay, so I can't speak to Trisha's fiance's mental health, but Moses wasn't a pharaoh. <laughs> Moses was adopted by the pharaoh's daughter at the time. And literally in no text is he referred to as Moses' pharaoh. Fer Moses never holds an official position in Egypt. Joseph, the son of Jacob, at one point held a royal vizier title or something along those lines when he was like in charge of a lot of stuff after making nice with pharaoh and interpreting some dreams. But that's a different person. <laughs> And still not a pharaoh. Which one of the following celebrities oh, is it. not Jewish? Oh. Whoa. Which one is not Jewish? Ready? Yeah. Bob Dylan, oh. Harvey Keitel, Bruce Springsteen, Winona Ryder. Wait, who the fuck is Bob Keitel? Can you show me a photo? Harvey Har Keitel. Harvey Keitel. Oh, Harvey. Quentin Tarantino, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. Can you show me a photo? Oh, my. Dust hold on. You can't see a photo. Why? I, I, I have a right to know who he's referring to. You just... You just want to look at his nose. You don't have a big nose. Yeah, I just want to look at his big, beautiful Jewish Your nose. Your nose is not big at all. Okay, Wait. thanks, stereotype. Trisha Paytas, everyone. Let's get the nose measurer. Oh, that's a line from this song? All, all of those people that I listed mm -hmm. are in, in, yeah. the, in the Adam Sandler uh, Hanukkah oh, song. Oh, man, your research is the Hanukkah Trisha song? Trisha Paytas, not <laughs> Jewish, but I love to put some more in her. That's Yo. what he said, yeah. What? Yep. I got Jewish on me every night, you know what I'm saying? Stop. <laughs> I don't like that. I would like to report this as harassment. Inseminated with Jewish. Stop. It's disgusting. Ugh, I hope I'm pregnant. Anyways, uh, what is the holiest accessible Jewish site Ew. in Israel? Holiest what? The holiest accessible Jewish site in Israel. 
You were confident. Yeah, you said this. Confident. All right, Ready. here we go. Three, two, one, reveal. <laughs> the Western Wall is correct. What the fuck did you write? Uh, what did you even write? Jordan River. That's where Jesus was born. How is that not Excuse holy? Me. <laughs> but not to that's Jews. That's the wrong religion, dude. And I don't even think that's right for Christians. The Holy Sepulchre is in Jerusalem. Well, Jerusalem is... Pro- <clears throat> And that's one of their holy sites. It's the number one tourist attraction that the Jews profit off of. <laughs> okay. So just because something's holy to Christianity doesn't make it holy to Judaism. Um, and Jews profiting off of something doesn't make it holy. That seems anti-Semitic. Eh. Yeah, yeah. The resurrection is coming, though. I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's hype. Get hype. <laughs> what does Trisha know that we don't? <laughs> Where is she getting this information? <laughs> oh my God! What do you think about that? Oh, what All the, right. the, the Chris- rapture? Are you scared? The rapture? I'm covering my bases. Covering my bases. Of course, that's what she sees being being Jewish as, because of course she's not actually Jewish. She's one of those messianic Jews, but like she sees being Jewish as covering all of her bases, so she doesn't go to hell. You gotta love it. Jew and well, the rapture and like fundamental Christianity, they love Israel and Israelis, but the root of their their lo- quote love for Jews is is seated in something very sinister, which is basically during the rapture, all of Israel and Israelis will be annihilated. So, so I'm not a fan of the rapture, nor Christians who subscribe to that. I, well, wait, he's actually right about this. Ethan was right. Let's give him a point, everybody. But um, Christians do believe this. It's one of the reasons that a lot of fundamentalist Christians believe is Jews must be restored to Israel. It's because when there is a Jewish state in Israel, uh, Jesus will come back and we'll all be killed and it'll be the rapture or whatever. But yeah, he's, he's right about that. It's horrifying. I, thanks, I hate it. That's yeah. what I, but and then we're all annihilated. That. Love that. She said love that. Right, but okay. I thought it was just because the prophecy says that there must be Jews in Israel for the rapture to occur. And like then, it's one of like the prerequisites or whatever. Yeah, and then we're annihilated. Oh, I guess that's true. But the good ultimately. news is you're not going to hell because Jews don't believe in hell. You'll get well, some Christians sort of heaven. believe it. Christians believe that Jews will be annihilated and go to hell for eternity. That's why I'm both a Christian and a Jew because I don't believe in hell. You got to pick sides, girl. You cannot sit on the fence on this one. You're, no, I don't believe you're not going to go to hell. So this is one of the fundamental problems with Trisha's insistence that she can be a Jew for Jesus because Judaism and Christianity are inherently contradictory. Um, A lot of things that Christians believe directly oppose Jewish views. He's like, yo, you didn't accept me in your, you didn't accept me in your heart. Sorry, technicality, burn in hell forever. No, that's New New Testament Testament God. mm -mm. Oh yeah, burn in hell for eternity. That's Jesus. You literally just said Jews don't believe in hell. That's the Old Testament. God, Jesus is fucking hellfire. Jesus is the hellfire guy. So Trisha literally is here this entire time just saying like, oh, the Old Testament God sucks. New Testament God's where it's at. And I'm just like, wow, way to like completely put out your whole ass out there that you don't actually read and don't understand. Like, uh, like the lack of education is so strong with this one. It, here's another uh, pop culture more related one. Yes. Um, what country is the famous musical Jewish musical Fiddler on the Roof set in? Oh my goodness. Oh. Country you said? Yeah. Like where does it take place? The story. Huh? Oh my god. You know. What? It's one of the songs from Fiddler on the Roof. Do you know Fiddler on the Roof? I know it. It's about being Jewish. Yeah. There's a lot of fucking countries where Jews live. The thing is I think I know what's coming and I am... I'm so ready for her to be wrong. I'm real excited. In what era of human history do you think that there were fiddlers on roofs? When the fuck have you ever seen a fiddler on the roof, Dan? What kind of clue is that? Yeah, when have you ever seen one? It's fictitious. Before the war. Juland. Here we go. Here's the answer. And Israel, Germany, wrong on both counts. What? Takes place in Russia. I was going to write Russia. No! Bingo. Like... I mean, clearly neither of them have seen it because it's like really about shtetl life. Um, shtetl meaning like, you know, little Jewish villages. Like so the heart of Fiddler on the Roof is the shtetl community. And like, it's like, it's like the end of the musical is literally them being forced off of their land. Spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen Fiddler on the Roof. Like, it's not about the Holocaust. It's about pogroms and stuff like that. Um, which is a different aspect of Jewish history and like 
deeply ingrained in Jewish identity is like being forced from place to place. And so people don't know that a lot of the history of being Jewish is being kicked from country to country like a hacky sack. Like a lot of people don't know how fortunate they are to be able to trace their identities back to like a tiny village in Ireland for thousands of years. I mean, it's just kind of like, it's just kind of astonishing to me that he's never seen Fiddler on the Roof. I'm not like throwing any shade here, but like Fiddler on the Roof is like the Jewish musical. I've been in it like, I feel like twice. I've seen it a million times. I've seen it live. I've watched the movie. I know the soundtrack. I could sing you all the songs. Like as a Jewish kid who was into musicals, Fiddler on the Roof was the jam. I was gonna write Russia. Are you sure? Girl, I literally, you Are you sure? Trish is always sure she's right. I don't, this girl is just delusional, straight up. Okay, fam- girl. My family's Russian Jew, so you, you can take it from okay. me. Okay. Damn, I was going to say Russia. Kinda, That's yeah, fucked they kinda, up. Yeah, they're not, you know, legit, legit. <laughs> there again, Trisha's saying that Jews that aren't from Israel aren't legit. I love that. I love that for her. You go, girl. Girl boss. Okay. Which of the following words is not <gasps> Yiddish? Ah! <gasps> The official language of the Jews is Hebrew, not Yiddish. That's a made-up language uh, that no one speaks anymore. All languages are made up. Dude, Hebrew... Okay, stop. Yiddish, okay. where do they you speak literally... Yiddish? What country are you going to Yiddish, Yiddish is like the original exactly. Jewish language. Hebrew gra- was just invented like 50 years ago. My Yiddish. Yeah, Mine too. so they could communicate with Who each other. Who the fuck are you to tell me about Yiddish? Oh Excuse me. Take it back, see girl. You're right. getting over. Yiddish. You, you... Trish is always saying that Yiddish isn't a real language, and I'm just like... I can't even educate yourself. All of those but one are Yiddish words. This is words. like a fake language. The Jews did not speak Yiddish. You are f- so fucking full of shit. You they literally don't know what the fuck you're after, talking about. After, after the you're Jews talking were about freed. Hebrew. Oh, you don't know I'm what you're talking about. Hebrew, not Yiddish. Hebrew, Hebrew was made up. Language. Oh my! God. It's the official language of Israel. And you know who spoke Yiddish? All the fucking Jews before they were mass murdered in Germany. <laughs> Trish is so fucking stupid. I can't even handle it. Just Google it. I do feel sorry for them. That is sad. That is, that was a sad incident. And then imagine you sitting here telling telling okay, their ghosts you're right. that I'm their actually, language doesn't I'm also isn't a, real. Okay, let me ask you another apology. <laughs> Noah, Go ahead. Dixie, and the Jews that <laughs> you're going to clump the Jews in with Noah and Dixie. You, you do they oh, not deserve the same amount of respect? You deserve oh, you? each one an individual apology. Noah's a <sighs> Jewish word, so he might be Jewish. Oh, okay. So this is kind of like an overlap. There. I mean Noah's Ark. <laughs> I know Yiddish. I know Shiksa. You know yeah, that. You are <laughs> Shiksa. People used to call me that for real, and I was like. Like parents, and I'm like, are you? What are you in the 1940s? Are you in the Holocaust right now? Why are you? Oh calling my me god! That? No offense, though. I don't mean any disrespect to the Holocaust survivors or people who died in the Holocaust. The victims. It's sad too. I'll watch Schindler's List again. I promise. Yeah, give it another shot. <laughs> <laughs> Movie night when we have dinner with your mom. We all. Oh, that'd Schindler's be fun. List. That'd be fun. <laughs> okay. It's a nice light viewing. All right. So, at what ages do bar and bat mitzvah usually take oh place? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. I Offered to play a bar mitzvah. Did I tell you this? Someone offered me ten thousand dollars to come to their to do bar what? mitzvah. Um, I guess to perform. Are you going to do it? Should I? Is it in L.A.? Michigan. Oh. I guess. Ugh. Who's had the poor taste to ask for that? That poor kid. If that's what the kid wanted, like I kind of understand. But oh my god, why would you do this to your child? Why would you expose them to this? Why would you enable this? <laughs> that's bad parenting. Neither of you gave a complete answer, what? Um, but I said bar and bot, men and women. Oh my god! Is it not the same number? Well, then you just gave away that you don't know the answer. I guess it's thirteen. It's thirteen. It's thirteen for bar. It's different for women. Well, women, it doesn't even count. We Who both get a, a point. Bah, it's a, no, it's a bat mitzvah. We only know a bar mitzvah here. Well, women, what happened to women empowerment? Not in the Jewish world. Bat mitzvahs count. Like, I don't know how to, like, Tris is such a little shit. I hate this. Why did I do this to myself? I knew it was going to make me mad, and I did it anyway. I knew this was going to hurt me. Why did I do this? Somebody take the internet away from me. We All right. Yeah, well, of course we'll do that. Here we go. The Name the three largest ethnic groups of Jews in Israel. Oh, this is gonna go well. Largest what? Ethnic groups. What is ethnic? What does that mean specifically? Like colors of skin? Uh, uh, What's that like, like? Like define. So she doesn't know what ethnicity is. That's interesting, considering um, 
how often she gets herself into shit over racist stuff. Maybe she should take like a critical studies class. <laughs> Trisha, go to college. Oh, Moses you're meaning like those hard, complicated words? The hard, yes. <laughs> yes, the hard, oh complicated words. Oh my God. There's three uh, uh, sort of, the three biggest ones. Wait, three? You said two. No, I said three. And if I said two, I meant to say three. You said three, yeah. Cause wait, that's what? That threw me off because I was like, I knew there was two. And then I was like, wait. Wait, what the fuck? You said two. Wait, you said three, but... There's only two, bro. <laughs> no. there, there's two major ones. There's You're literally wrong right now, Dan. Oh, my God. I don't understand why they're assuming that Dan is wrong all the time. Like, I feel like Dan's getting a lot of shit on this podcast. Sorry, Dan. Maybe you shouldn't work for such shitty people. Um, but... Um, there are multiple ethnic groups of Jews. I don't know why. Um, in fact, like this is just like what he's about to say is the big three ones. There are like a bunch of different other ones. I, I obviously don't know all the names because I'm a dirty American and we don't get a lot of education. Um, but there are Jews from all over the world and there are Jews from like any country. Like there's Jews all over the place and they're from different groups and like they're all valid. Like saying there's only two Jewish ethnic groups is vastly underestimating the global Jewish community. I don't know why they're so assured when they're so wrong. It, it'd be almost kind of sad. Okay, you ready? I think I only got one. I don't. I mean, Dan. I hate stepping to an Israeli, but I just looked it up. It's not the same He's thing. He's not an expert on Jewish. Dan, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm looking. It's Sephardic and Ashkenazi. Yeah, those yeah. are the only two. What's the other one? It's the third one. It's Mizrahi. And yeah, Mizrahi. Mizrahi just means Middle Eastern. Yeah, it's the Bro, it literally means Middle Eastern. I don't know if I have to like break out a map and explain basic geography, but um, Ashkenazi Jews are from Eastern Europe. Sephardic Jews are from the Iberian Peninsula, Spain or Portugal. Mizrahi Jews are from the Middle East, which is different. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you, it's just different. Sephardic Jews can also be from like Northern Africa. What did you Ask write? Eugene Levy about that. But I didn't see what you wrote. I mean, I'm I reading know. all Dan, you're of... wrong! Okay. <laughs> what is her obsession with Jewish celebrities? It makes me so uncomfortable. Which all one right. are you? I'm uh, Ashkenazi. I'm Mizrahi. You're... Oh, I'm you're Moroccan? Moroccan? Yeah. Oh, for real? Trisha just has some DNA test says she's Moroccan, but here's the thing. Just because you're from Morocco doesn't mean that you're a Jew from Morocco. Wow. How about bonus point, name a Jew in Hollywood that's both Ashkenazi and Sephardic? No. Eugene Levy. Okay. Nailed it. Got the bonus point. That's one for me, zero for Trisha. What's the score? When Next. is the Teddy Fresh and Jew collab coming? <laughs> the Jew collab? That'd be Who everything. do I need to license that from? Seriously, can you do a Star of David merch? That's everything. With the with the teddy bear with a little Star of David on it? Mm, I'm not into the whole... I'm not really into that. But then you could wear something so people don't have to wear a tallit. Instead of that, we could wear like a little teddy fresh Jew bear. You guys got both Jew in you. It's great. It's yeah, not I'm it. not sure. Donate to the Jewish organization. First of all, the Jewish organization. There's just one. <laughs> Second of all, oh my god. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you, lady? Go sit in the corner. Go. You need to take a break. I love a Star of David. It's proud. You know why I wear the Star of David? Because in the Holocaust, they put the Star of David on people to identify them as Jewish and like, oh, these mm -hmm. are bad people. Now we wear it proudly because we're proud to be Jews. Right. I think they wore it proudly before the Holocaust too. No, babe. Wasn't it a thing like, put this on them, they're a disgrace. Oh, I yeah. know that happened in the Holocaust, but people wore Star of Davids before the Holocaust. Well, now we can wear this and not get killed. Right. So wear it proud. Wear it proud. So it but you're not a, a Jew. Brush. You wouldn't be in a Holocaust. I would. I wouldn't care. I would sacrifice myself. If I could go in place of my fiance, I would go in, in front of him. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, so nice of you to say now. I There's would. no risk to I so would. I would hide him. That'd be the person I'd be. I'd hide him in my house. I wonder if the wife of a Jew of a non yeah. I don't know that there was much intermingling back then. I don't think Jews married non Jews. Was it maybe. really that bad? Like it was like almost like interracial like back then, right? Like it was like ooh. I think there. No, I mean I think the Jews just really kept to them. They just married within. They still are like that Jew crazy, being like we only want to marry a Jewish yeah. woman. Okay, calm yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, it is still like that. But back then it was even more, as you can imagine. Okay, Jews were kept within their communities because they were told they couldn't participate in other forms of commerce and things like that. Jews kept to themselves because it was safe. I don't like her inclination to portray Jews as like standoffish and not wanting to mingle. Um, Jews were forced into their own enclaves because that was where they could be safe and like have commerce with each other and like do that kind of thing. Um, because they weren't accepted in wider society. You ignorant bitch. 
Next question, please. Thank I you really so much. I really do respect the Jews. I want people to know. I like. I really love them from like a place in my like gut. Like I love them so much. Thank or heart. Gut. I don't <laughs> know what the fuck you're. You gotta. Have... I just love Jewish culture. I just wish I had a culture. I really don't have an identity of my own. That's why I'm like trying to be so many different identities because I don't know who I am. That's it right there. That's it exactly right there. She doesn't have any culture of her own. Um, I guess because. Her parents raised her in a vacuum and she's not even like an American person. Like there are cultural aspects of whiteness. People think that like being white means that you have no culture, but like I know white people who do all kinds of cultural stuff and you're a Christian and you grew up Catholic. Like you have a culture. You're just bored and interested in stealing other people's stuff. Like she's literally saying it right here, what she means. I don't have a culture. So I'm seeking identity elsewhere. Okay, join a softball team. We're not here for that. <laughs> Fuck you. This one is sort of a, a name as many as you can yeah. style question. So good at these. Uh, list as many of the ten plagues of Egypt. Oh my goodness! As you can. The okay. ten what? The ten plagues from the story of Moses. Oh, right, 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 right. I think I got five, like legit five. All right. Are we good? I think so. Let's see what we got. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. How many have? All right. Well, let, let me read them off. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, got, I guess we'll do one of them at a time. Why don't you read the 10 and then let's see. And you guys can see if you got them right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Water turned to blood. Oh, and uh, frogs. I got frogs. Okay. So It rained frogs. This is Trisha realizing that uh, she wrote down the 10 commandments and not the 10 plagues. Um, very different. Come on. I just got to get through the next 10 minutes. It's almost over. <laughs> Yeah, One was, more for, uh, for the legend, the, question the king was of all the Jews. They, there's a reason people call me king of all Jews. I think that's Howard Stern. I think it's Jesus. There's no king of all Jews. We're not centralized that way. Please leave me alone. Sorry. But... I made some bomb-ass challah. For the record, she didn't make challah. She took a pre-made challah and put a bunch of stuff on it that's totally unrelated. The only acceptable coverings for challah are in this order. Butter, or a butter substitute if you can't eat dairy. Um, honey, like on Roshana, and guacamole. You'd be surprised, but it's fucking delicious. Yeah, do it if you do it at the hospital. That's a fine way to have a baby. Okay. But but regardless, that doesn't affect the outcome of the circumcision. Right. I would have a doctor do it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Rabbi, no, rabbi. Rabbis fucking don't know what they're doing. You want to do it? Um, and, uh, where did you extrapolate that? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. The rabbis are like suck off the baby. <laughs> You can watch them do it, obviously, so they don't do that. But they're just not trained professionals. Like, a lot of times they'll mangle the kid's dick. Okay, okay. So Ethan is perpetrating misinformation here. Um, most of the rabbis who I know who are certified to uh, do a Brit Milah are actually also doctors. <laughs> like, the only one who I know personally is also an OBGYN. She's retired now, but not important. Like, most rabbis who are certified to do a Brit Milah the kind of rabbis who do that professionally do mostly that. Like, they only do a Brit Mila. Uh, it's called a Mohelet or a Mohel. Um, and those people do that, and they're certified to do it. And um, they take very good care with this stuff because it's really important. Not only is it an important rite of passage, uh, welcoming a baby boy into the Jewish community, but also you want to be careful with your child's body. Um, so... The kind of people who do circumcisions are very well certified and very careful, and I can't believe he's just perpetrating this misinformation like this. Also, that's not a thing rabbis do. It's a myth. It's not okay. I think the most deviation from the actual medical procedure that a rabbi might do is give baby a little bit of wine in their mouth just to, like, distract him a little bit. But they don't even cry because it hurts. They cry because they're cold. Like, I've been to many a bris, and, like, circumcision is very controversial, but... Like, the way that he's talking about it just is totally inaccurate. I mean, you get so mad over nothing. It's literally Jewish trivia that means nothing. I mean, to the Jews it means something, but to us it's like we're on front of me, you know? <laughs> to the Jews it means something. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't mean anything to you because you're not fucking Jewish. An old trivia one. From, right. from Orthodox to uh, Nazi. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> she loves Nazis, everybody. I'm sure that's not what she meant, but, like, for real. All right, guys, we'll see you next week for another episode of Frenemies. Thank you for joining us. You know what time it is. And, um. Shalom. Shalom, Shabbat, Shemuch, Shemuchin, Bukin, Chicken. Bye. <laughs> they have to thank me for watching because it was legitimately a chore. <laughs>
<laughs> I feel so oppressed right now. <laughs> like, they were just like, uh, it was so bad. Oh my god. Like, that's maybe the worst one. I know that, like, Trisha's had some really heinous stuff in the past, but, like, oh my god. He's just given her such license to say whatever she wants, and, like, he calls her on it a little bit. Like, yeah, Yiddish is a real language, but, like, like, the way that they're dressed, and the way that they're talking, and, like, fact-checking everything. Like, oh yeah, Kharosad isn't a real thing. Meh. Have you ever been to Passover, bud? Like, I don't know. What's your damage? <laughs> I'm, I'm just so pressed. I can't. Um, outro. This was really bad. I'm offended. I just, I feel like a sense of overwhelming depression right now. Not like the clinical kind that I normally have. Like, just kind of a wave of existential horror. I feel different. But not like in a good way. I don't know, I just feel kind of empty <laughs> and sad. <laughs> well, thank you for watching. I'm sad now. I hope you liked it. Bye.